Good morning guys! Time check, it's 5.20 a.m. and I really feel it's the best time to record this video lecture on sentence transformation. <laughs> so, this is the first uh, of a two-part video and in this video, I will talk about three things. First, steps to transform statements from active to passive and vice versa. Second, things to watch out for when transforming and third, uh, maybe uh, some general guidelines on how to use active and when when to use active and passive voice so please do a self-check of your readiness for this lesson how do you do that okay using three easy steps first I uploaded um, three PDF files in our WordPress site I want you to read and study the one titled active and passive form Second, there's a quiz there, so um, maybe in a piece of paper, write down your answers in the quiz. Finally, check your answers by referring to uh, the answer key. It's also a PDF file. So I got all this from the reference um, englishforeveryone.org. So this will really refresh your memory because active passive transformation is part of your past English lessons. So... How did you do in the uh, exercises? If you fared well, if you're ready, then put your game face on and we will continue. So if we're talking about voice, what really is, um, are we talking about when we say voice? The voice of the verb simply describes the relationship between the action and the subjects. That's it. So, when the subject is a doer or when the subject is the actor, the agent, doer of the action, then the voice is in active um, voice. The verb is in active voice. Example in the sentence, heroes slay monsters. Heroes, subject, and the same subject is also the doer and the agent. Okay, therefore, the verb is transitive and... Whatever uh, receives the action, you call that the direct object. Meanwhile, okay, if it's passive voice, that means your subject receives the action expressed in the verb. It is acted upon. That's why you often see the by phrase, the by phrase, or sometimes it may also be omitted if it's not that important in the sentence. So see here, the verb, uh, no, no, the subject monsters is acted upon okay acted upon therefore you can say that the verb is in passive voice so um steps to transform from active to passive remember okay first you have to identify the sentence pattern because if it's for example siv in transitive verb for example um the sun rises Sun rises, it's in trans the, the word rises is intransitive verb, therefore no receiver. If there's no receiver, then it cannot be transformed to passive. Why? Because the receiver in the passive form will become the new subject. So, you can only transform sentences that, uses, um, sentences that use a transitive verb. So, first step is to identify the sentence pattern if it's STVDO, DOOC, or IODO. Okay, second step is to use the direct object as the new subject. Okay, whatever the direct object is, that will be the new subject in the passive form. And how about the verb? What will happen to the verb? The new verb will be formed using this formula. So you have linking verb or any form of the verb be plus past participle of the given verb. That's why in transforming, it's important that you know, maybe you will refer to a list of the past, how to form the past participles of different verbs. Okay, and finally, um, check okay, if the modifiers are placed correctly and check also if the subject and verb agree with each other. 
So let's apply these steps in the following sentences. Number one, Filipinos deserve democracy. So step one, identify sentence pattern. This is simply STVDO. What is your DO? Democracy. So democracy will become the new subject. Democracy. Okay, next step. Um, what is the new verb? Deserve. So you add a linking. Since democracy is singular and deserve is uh, in present tense, we use a present tense linking verb. Is. Is deserved. Okay, and then by phrase. By Filipino. So, democracy is deserved by Filipinos. Sorry. Number two, the students are watching the video lecture now. So, S, T, V, D, O, and now functions as A, M. So, the video lecture will become your new subject. Video lecture. And then look at the verb, are watching. Are watching. Present progressive. So that means if you add the linking verb, it will be be, be verb, be plus ing. So being, and then what is the past participle of watch, watching, watched. Okay, watch. So being watched. And depending on your subject, your new subject is the video lecture. So the video lecture is being watched by the students now. Okay. Third, the board has announced its decision. So, DO, STVDO, the DO is its decision. And then has announced, you simply add been, been, because it's in past participle, has been announced by the board. However, it sounds like um, a third party made a decision. So, it's not um, consistent with our sentence. So you can rephrase that by saying the board's decision has been announced. So there's no need to say the by phrase because um, it's still referring to the, the same doer. Um, okay. And number four, the dance company brought the country pride and honor. So this one is STVDO. Oh, no, no. STVIODO. Brought what? Pride and honor. To whom? For whom? For the country. So your DO, pride and honor, that will be your new subject. Pride and honor, and then brought will become was. Was brought, since it's in past tense, to the country by the dance company. Okay. Five, most people regard free and accessible education as the solution to poverty. This one is STVDO. And then OC, as the solution to poverty, complements free and accessible education, which is our DO. So our sentence begins with that. Free and accessible education, uh, pick the verb regard. It will become, it, since it's in present tense, you use a present tense linking verb is. And then past participle of regard is regarded. So you have free and accessible education is regarded by most people as the solution to poverty. Okay, so that's easy, isn't it? Now, let's talk about steps to transform from active to passive. So you will simply reverse uh, the steps. Use the object of the by phrase as the new subject. Okay. Uh, it will be the doer. And then for the verb, uh, in the passive form, you have a verb phrase, right? So you will simply remove the form of be, the be verb there. So am, is, was, where, are, been. You will remove that. And then use the verb that will suit, okay, the new subject in the passive voice. And then same as always, you have to check modifiers if they're placed correctly and subject verb agreement so let's have examples so three sentences maybe you can pause for a while write your answers in a piece of paper and then compare your answers with uh, mine okay so if you're done if you're done let's see the answers that tree was planted by my grandfather. So by phrase, my grandfather, and then you remove the linking, uh, the B form. Was planted, planted will become planted, simply planted. So my grandfather planted that tree. Next, next one, by him. Him 
is in objective form, so you have to make it into a subject form. He, he. And then being is being claimed. What will happen? Um, remove the verb be, therefore ing will remain and it will be carried by the verb claim. So claiming. He is claiming what? The title. So he is claiming the title. As simple as that. This one, rumors had been spread by the tabloid writers. So tabloid, ta tabloid uh, writers, your new subject, and then remove, remove the verb be, been. So you will be left with had spread. So the tabloid writers had spread the rumors. Okay, so if you need more practice, a more detailed explanation, if you think that was too fast, then refer to this link. Okay, thanks to watch. We now come to the second part of the video. Thanks to watch out for. First, avoid starting a sentence in active voice and then suddenly shifting to passive. That will be inconsistent writing. Okay, and unnecessary shift. So, for example here, when Leanne learned about the hero's journey, the importance of overcoming fears was realized by her. In the first clause, the dependent clause, you have Leanne as the doer. But then suddenly, in the main clause, she became um, a passive receiver by her. So, if we change that, okay... It, it will be active voice, active voice. So when Leanne learned about the hero's journey, she, referring to Leanne, okay, she realized the importance of overcoming fears. So I hope you agree with me that the second one sounds so much better. Number two, do not change the verb tense. Do not change the verb tense. So whatever is given in the sentence, stick to it. So example here, Frodo and Sam took the ring to Mount Doom. Took is in past tense, simple past tense. So you will not say the ring is taken to Mount Doom by Frodo and Sam because is is um in present tense. So the correct answer is the ring was taken to Mount Doom by Frodo and Sam. Number three, make sure the subject and the verb agree in number. Um, I told you that several times already. So here, Harry Potter battled uh, power obsessed dark wizards, memories of the past, and even pangs of adolescence. So if you transform that, you say power obsessed dark wizards, memories of the past, and even pangs of adolescence were battled by Harry Potter. Remember, Harry Potter is no longer your subject, so it's no longer um, singular. You have this entire phrase as your new subject, and it's uh, plural. So if the subject is plural, the verb should also be plural. Number four, check to see if there are no misplaced or dangling modifiers. In this example, or read, the rapid growth of the nuclear power industry has raised a number of questions about potential radiation exposure. So STBDO, what is your DO? A number of questions about potential radiation exposure. And then what will become of your verb? Has raised, it will become has been raised. So if you answered a number of questions have been raised by the rapid growth of the nuclear power industry about potential radiation exposure, then you... Um, committed, uh, you misplaced the modifier. Which modifier? This um, prepositional phrase about potential radiation exposure because the rule is it should be near, the modifier should be near the subject or the sentence element that it should modify. So we'll place that correctly. So we have a number of questions about, okay, that's where you should put it about potential radiation exposure have been raised by the rapid growth of the nuclear power industry. Okay, so now we go to the third part. When do we use the active and passive voice? So generally speaking, we prefer the active voice. Why? Because it's shorter, it's more direct to the point, it's easier to understand, it even uses fewer words. Okay, so imagine if, you're, if your sentences uh, sound like this. Since the car was being driven by Michael at the time of the accident, the damages should be paid for by him. That's unnecessarily long. Compare that with the uh, active construction. Since Michael was driving the car at the time of the accident, he should pay for the damages. Right? Okay, 
So, do you see the difference? That's why we prefer the active voice. But the passive might be more acceptable in the following cases. So, we have a uh, first uh, case, the actor is unknown. So, we don't know. In this sentence, we don't know who did the inscription. So, you just say the Laguna copper plate was inscribed with small writing hammered into its surface. So, it's something historical. You can't really check. Number two, the actor is relevant. It's not important anymore. Example, you say, an experimental solar power plant will be built in the Australian desert. So is it important who's building it? Nah, so don't put it. Number three, you want to be vague about who is responsible. So we use passive. So this is common in bureaucratic writing where you don't want to point uh, fingers at anyone or blame anyone. So you say mistakes were made. That's it. Although it sounds vague and ambiguous. Okay. The intention of the author is to really be vague about who's responsible. Number four, you are tr talking about a general truth. So, for example, rules are made to be broken by whomever, whenever. Therefore, we use a passive voice. You want, okay, another case, you want to emphasize the person or thing acted on. Here, you have two sentences and both of them focus on the topic insulin. So, it's better to use passive. Insulin was first discovered in 1921 by scientists at the University of Toronto. It is still the best treatment available for diabetes. So, you stick to the passive voice. And number six, uh, you are writing in a scientific genre that traditionally relies on passive voice so in writing your lab reports in your side papers or when you're doing your thesis in the materials and methods section so you as a researcher is no longer important what's more important is what was done okay so the sodium hydroxide was dissolved in water so example the sol solution was then titrated with hydrochloric acid so the doer is not so important so, those are the six instances where passive voice is preferred than the active voice. Okay. So, we finished all three parts. Now, it's time for the exercises. Grab a pen and a paper. And I want you to transform this from active to passive. And when you're done, transform this from passive to active. Okay. After writing your sentences, okay, pause the video for a while. And do not go to the, do not resume or play again the video unless you have your answers ready so you can compare. Okay, and for the answers, here they are. Okay, so I wish to take the references. Also, you have to wait for the next part of the video that one will be on transforming statements to questions so goodbye everyone good morning